Hey there. Hi, Gail. Hi there, friends. This is Kristen here. Kristen Fagan with Softlex Company. New episode of Free Spirit Feeding on this beautiful Monday. How is everyone out there today? I hope that you had a lovely weekend. Um, if you are a mother or daughter or mothers of all kind, doggy mama, cat mama, um, I hope you had a lovely day yesterday. Hope it was relaxing and loving, adventurous, creative, however you wanted to spend it. Hi, Gail. Hey, Lydia. I wore my flower crown <laughs> and, I, and I made a flower crown for my mother-in-law and I gave it to her at brunch. So we both had our crowns on as we uh, enjoyed a Mother's Day breakfast together. And then I had a really nice rest of the day, pretty relaxing. Um, once we got kind of breakfast out of the way and that was like our big thing out the rest of the day just spent however I wanted to. I took two naps, <laughs> which is odd because I'm not really a napper, but we did get up for breakfast a little early. So that must have been why. <laughs> so two naps. And I um, I talked to my mom. I talked to both of my sisters. And what else do we do? We, I went and did a little thrift store shopping um, with my kids. So that was fun. And uh, yeah, just had a lovely day. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Sharon. Cynthia is saying hello to us from California, Phillips Ranch, California. Rosa Linda's here. Cynthia loves my earrings. Thanks, Cynthia. They are um, they are from one of the wooden pop outs that we got uh, last month. So we sold out of this style, but I will show you um, over here on the little cam. So we painted this one about a month ago, and now we're gonna look at some of the new pop outs that we have. I think we have one left of the Azalea Garden from the old, um, well, I shouldn't say old, it was only like a month ago, the, old, the older version. And then we got these three new pop-outs in uh, just recently. Hi, Thomas. Thomas is here with us today because Damien is off on vacation, relaxing, and he'll, he'll be gone for, um, I think, this week and next week. And then I go on vacation. And I said, Damien is the other half of the graphic design team here at Softlex Company um, with me. And so I'll be picking up a little bit of the slack for him while he's on vacation, and then he'll be picking it up for me. Um, I'll be ready for vacation by the time he comes back, I'm sure. <laughs> and hopefully he'll be well rested. <laughs> um, yeah, Lydia says, sounds like your day was wonderful. It was. It was a really nice, relaxing day. I was going to do some yard work, but I didn't get around to it. Um, I just decided to let myself uh, flutter about and do whatever felt like wanted to be done. Hey, Gloria. Hopefully not. Yes, Lydia says, hopefully not the last nice day before the heat rolls in. We have a beautiful day today. Oh, and Thomas is on vacation in mid-June, and Shelly is on vacation right now. We're all taking our <laughs> we're all taking our summer vacations and kind of catching up a little bit on a lot of the vacations that we missed uh, over the last couple of years, right? So, yay for vacation! Um, Speaking of summer, we have a summer jewelry party that we have planned with Jesse James Beads. You can grab the supply kit over at softlexcompany.com, and then you get the bead kit over at jessejamesbeads.com. You need both kits for the event, so you get the supply kit from us, the bead kit from them, and then the event. It's a two-day event um, with four designers, four um, projects that will be taught and um, you can find all the details over on our website in the pool party, uh, jewelry making 
pool party um, product. And I think it's June 3rd, 2nd and 3rd. I will be away, so I won't be participating in that particular event, but you will have um, Sarah Ayler and you're also gonna have Joyce Trowbridge there. So from Softlex Company, representing Softlex Company. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what everyone uh, has planned for summer jewelry designs. Let me see what else we got here to talk about. Um, we have this lovely new little background. So I'm just gonna pop this on for a second. That just shows you all the places you can connect with us. So we're at softlexcompany.com. Use the hashtag softlexwire whenever you're sharing things on social media. This way we see it and we can share it too. You can follow us over um, on Facebook. We are Softlex Company on Facebook. And then we have a Facebook group which is the first one listed called the Softlex VIB Studio. It's a wonderful group, a private group, so you can feel free to share what you're working on, ask questions, and just really be inspired by what everyone else is up to. Then, of course, you can find us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Pinterest, and Twitter. And we're streaming live today to the Softlex Company Facebook page as well as the Softlex Company YouTube channel. Our sale this week is a closeout sale. We have a spring clearance event going on. You can check out the closeout section at softlexcompany.com. And right now we've got um, deeper discounts on items in there that have been there for a little while just to kind of help move those along. And then we have a bunch of new items that we just moved into closeout. So if you haven't taken a look, take a look at what is new and on sale over there. Uh, everything is posted as a sale price, but then once you add it to your cart, you're going to get an extra 10% off um, through tomorrow, which is May 10th at midnight Pacific time. Speaking of tomorrow, one more note to make, we have our next live bead sale. So you can find us over on the Softlex Company Facebook page at noon Pacific time tomorrow for our next live bead sale. It will be open through to Thursday night. So you can um, join us live or shop when it's good for you. Everything is um, limited supply. Things kind of go pretty quickly. So the closer you can get to that live time, the better to be able to get the items that you're really looking for. Um, and yeah, so you can shop through Thursday. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got to play with today. I will switch you down to my beading table here. We introduced um, a rainbow selection of colors with the Colorful Soul Ultimate Paint product line. So we brought in all of these six colors of the rainbow. You can buy them individually if you just wanna pick up uh, one or two, or you can purchase the bundle and the bundle will save you 10% by getting all six at once. What's really lovely about rainbow is, well, you've got all the colors of the rainbow to play with, but then you can also mix them up and make even more colors. And when you've got the basics, all of the, the rainbow color basics, you can make tons and tons of colors by mixing the green and the yellow together and by mixing the reds and the blue together or making more of a red violet with the purple lots of options so that's our new paint line that we brought in um, we've also got these lovely new wooden pop outs so you'll see you just use the paint to color in on these pop outs and then when you're ready you pop them out of this panel I, if any of you caught our um on Instagram or on TikTok, you can see these earrings that Sarah made last week. They're really, really cute. 
So this is one wooden panel. We've got three total, or again, you can buy the bundle of all three and get 10% off. Um, I'm not sure what this one is called on the line. We've got that style. We've got this style, which has a bunch of the lunar moths on it. The word love, some flowers and some stars. And then we've got this, which is the love and peace panel, which is the one I'm gonna play with today. Um, I'm gonna work with these hearts over here. So I'll put these aside. Marisol is so excited about those paints. I know they're really pretty. And look at the moths. They're gorgeous, right? So cool. I like how one of them is a uh, simple round pendant and then the other one is more of a connector with the two holes. So you can make two different moth style pieces of jewelry. And then I also have here our Love is Love design kit. We are 70% sold out. This is our newest mystery design kit. It's really heavy. We have a lot of really neat, um, interesting supply stuff in here. We worked with a couple of different vendors for this kit. So there are some slightly different items um, that you might find in here compared to our previous design kit. For example, our Jesse James beads um, mix is not in the kit as it usually is, but we are selling the Love is Love Jesse James beads bead mix separately. So you could pick that up and bead strand separately. Um, so you can also pick that up. I think we're down to just 15 or maybe 14 of the bead mix. So that one's going really fast. Um, I haven't gotten the mix or the strand here in my studio yet, so I can't show it to you, but you can go check it out at softlexcompany.com. Sarah will open this and reveal it at the end of this month, the last Wednesday of May at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And then we have an extra special jewelry making party, beading party planned um, for the middle of June with Sam's Bead Shop and Nile from Silver Silk. Um, Sam's Bead Shop has a mix in here uh, this time and there's something special from Nile. There's something special from a couple of other vendors as well. So grab one of those while we have them in stock. Like I said, they're about 70% out, sold out right now. I grabbed this lovely um, check glass bead mix. This is called, I think it's called the sparkle and shine or clear and sparkly. Maybe it's clear and sparkly. And I just grabbed this, we have this on closeout. So this was originally $10.99 and then it's on sale on closeout and then you get an extra 10% off through tomorrow, which makes it a little, about, a little bit over $7 for the entire mix. And I thought that this would be a great one for me to just kind of grab and have by me um, to make some jewelry with after painting the pop out. So I've got my wooden pop out. I've got my rainbow color paints, the ultimate paint. I have a plate here, um, just a regular paper plate. This one's got a little bit of a coating. And I have some special brushes. Now you can, I mean, we did try them with regular brushes and it worked okay, but these are the brushes they suggest you use. They are called silicone brushes. And I found mine in the, um, in the craft store. I actually found it in the ceramic section. So you might have to look in the ceramic section um, if you don't see it in the regular paintbrush section. And what it just has is a silicone tip. Why they suggest these is because this paint adheres to lots of different products. It adheres to wood, metal, leather, resin, and more. Um, however, it does not adhere to the silicone. So by using a silicone brush, you um, can easily wipe it off. I just have a 
damp paper towel here to wipe it off and it comes and cleans up really really easily i don't know if it possibly would stain or get stuck on a regular um, paintbrush so if you do just have regular paintbrushes try and use ones that are um, not real precious to you maybe ones that are a little more in the affordable or crafty side of things just in case it happens to get stained um, you have to really shake these up shake the bottle well and they clean up with water Let's see if it's what else it says on here okay all right so i'm gonna go ahead and shake up all my paints and pour some out on my on my little plate here I didn't do it yet, but there's a little triangle on the top of your paints that you can take the bottle and put a little dab of paint on the top, let it dry. And then this way, if you happen to store your paints in a container where they're all sitting up upright or maybe they're facing this way, you can see which color it is. I thought that that was a very nice touch. They dry fairly quickly, so I suggest not squirting too much onto your plate. This way you don't waste um, a whole lot. Shake, shake, shake. The yellow one really looked like I had to shake it. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. Was anyone in the Beads and Blooms event last week? It was a lot of fun. Sarah and I did a class on Friday. It was over with um, it was over on Facebook, but you had to get the kit and stuff before be, being into being a part of it. I guess it's you get the kit and then you get invited into this one. So you'll see. You really need to shake them up because you want to make sure that they blend. Shake it like a Polaroid. <laughs> that blue is pretty. I like that blue. Lapis. Oh, I always love blue lapis color. Any other blue lapis color fans out there? Give me all the blue lapis. I love the, I love the stone. I love the soft flex beading wire color, blue lapis. And I love this blue color. All right. So I did bring a little pencil here only because I wanna make a striped rainbow and the heart is pretty small. Um, so I brought a pencil to the table so that I can just give myself a little guideline. And then I've got one, two, three, four, six spaces and five stripes. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this heart over here and try and get it about the same I have to tighten that up just a little bit. And I'm making the assumption that this one and this one are the same size. This one being the inside here, I think they are. But I'm going to go and paint all the way to the back to this um, outside one, too, and see what happens. And let's see which paintbrush we're going to use. I need a tiny one. 
for this little space. So I think I'll use this one since it's got the pointiest small little point. Oh, we got a lot of lapis lovers. Zach says, yes. Lydia loves lapis as well as blue in general. Suzanne loves blue lapis. Sue, blue lapis is my favorite in everything. <laughs> yes, work-life balance. <laughs> like, what is going on if you take your, your paints and your jewelry supplies out while you're, while you're at work? So I'm just going to add the color to my paintbrush. And it just kind of sits on top of that silicone, silicone um, tip. Because like I said, it doesn't doesn't adhere. And I'm going to start with the red. Are you guys enjoying all the rainbow goodness that we've got going on this month? Um, oh, rainbows are just so much fun, aren't they? I love it. As an artist, you know, I love all of the, the rainbow colors and having a whole color palette to play with. You're a lover of science. You probably love the, that aspect of rainbows. So for the little one, I'm just going straight across. And for this one here, I'm just taking this outer, um, painting the inner heart and the outer heart together just to see what that looks like when it's done. You can wear your rainbow rainbow striped hearts with pride. I think this one would be really fun to alternate colors on too. You've got all those lines already there for you. I wasn't sure how much the colors would kind of bleed into one another. Um, so I may go back and add like another layer of certain colors to make it pop a little bit more. so that that orange can be, can be seen. And then I'll just wipe. See how easily that comes right off on a wet paper towel. And then go to yellow. Now you could leave paint on there and pick up another color and purposefully let it kind of bleed together like an ombre effect or blending. I could have it blend right on there. But I am trying to make stripes of the rainbow so that you could see each color. Yes, totally, Zach. I was going to mention that too, that, you know, as a, as a artist, I love all the colors for the color wheel and I love what different colors mean. And then um, they look like you can do chakra color work with it, which is more of the energy of each particular color and the energy source that it relates to. So having all of the colors, fun for that reason. 
Let's move on to green. This is one of those projects where I'm not a totally um, precise painter and artist. I tend to be a little more loose and free. And so it's kind of like, oh, why did I, why did I try and do stripes? <laughs> a challenge, I guess, right? Oh, it's looking super cute. That's why, that's why I'm doing it because it's looking super cute. And I'm just dabbing and cleaning off the one color when I go to pick up the next. Last will be this pretty purple. And if you watched my video earlier, when I used one of these, I popped them out first, but it does make sense to just paint them right on the wood piece if you can, because then you can just let the paint kind of go out of the line. And then when you pop it out, it should still be nice and clean. Marisol says, oh, it reminds me of the reading rainbow. It does. I love the reading rainbow. I used to watch that all the time. Cynthia says, it would be nice to have workshops for home-based business, putting a package together of supplies and teaching. Huh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, the way we do it now is we just have like mystery kits and things like that, or you can get bundles, um, but we don't have packages. Like you'd have to kind of buy them and put the package together yourself, right? If you wanted to then share it with teaching. But that would be a very cute idea. So I'm gonna paint a few other things while I let that dry, because I know I can't pop it out just yet. We have these really big, pretty um, dragonflies at the river by us that are blue. They have blue wings. This over here, actually, that would probably make more sense. I haven't played with these on metal yet, but I know that they do go on metal components. So if you have um, some metal components in your studio that you want to paint, you can use these paints for that too. Since we have all these fun new pop outs, I've been just sort of focusing on that.
Thomas says, take a look, it's in a book. <laughs> They're reading Rainbow. Yes, Janelda. I've never been able to paint within the lines. Does that mean that I have a creative soul? 100%. <laughs> we all have creative souls. We all have creative souls, and it just shows up for us each a little bit differently, right? Some of us are very comfortable painting in lines, and others not so much. Now I'm kind of feeling like I want to do a little mixing while I'm sitting here and see what happens if I take this blue and I take this purple. What color? Get like a nice, do we get a nice little periwinkle or like a lavender? And maybe I'll add that on these wings. So we have a little extra, another tone. I could do the same thing on the bottom if I wanna take a little of this purple and maybe add a little more red. I get you kind of a maroon. The red might be really pretty in these roses. What if I took the yellow? And the orange. Ooh, see, my yellow is starting to dry. It does dry really fast, which is good on your piece, but not so good if you want to mix up too many colors. That kind of got me like a corally color. can add a little bit of that on the tips of the roses. Just kind of play. Does the paint have an odor? I don't think so because I all I smell is the wooden pop out. The wooden pop outs have a very um, like woodsy smell to them. I don't think the paint smell at all. Very, very lightly. They have a super low odor, not something that I smell at all unless I'm sticking my nose right into them. All right, let's see if my let's see if my hearts are dry. They are. So I'm just running my finger over them to see and it looks like they are nice and dry. So I'm going to try and just pop those out. And it will pop out a couple of other things, but I'm going to try and just take these out. Cute. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I feel like I have a little bit of fixing to do on this one, on that yellow line. Let's see if I have any paint that's left, not too dry.
I like that it seems pretty easy to layer on top of what you had before. So if you need to make any little touch-ups, you can do that. And since it's wood, I would even think that if you wanted to sand something off, if you weren't happy with something, that you should be able to just use a very fine grit sandpaper paper and sand it down a little bit. Oh, look how sweet that turned out. Yes, yes you can. Earrings and a pendant, yes. Earrings and a pendant, said Zach. Yeah, painting indoors is totally okay. Marisol, now I need those cutouts. Can we buy them separate? You can. So you can buy either the bundle of all three or you can get them each separately. And you can check them out in the um, under the tools section and there'll be a category called ultimate paint and jewelry pop-outs. Find that at softlexcompany.com. So let's make a little sweet pair of earrings and then we've got a little pendant here. Let's see what I've got. Got some silver ear wires. Do I want to use anything from in here is my question. These seem like they're the smallest, these little silver and white. little bollies. So those could be an option. Or there's some fire polish looking sparkly ones. They're a little bit bigger. Gonna take out some of these bigger spikes and little pieces here that I likely won't use. These are cute. They're a frosted little bead. Or do I have anything in white? These little white ones are cute too. Let's see if I have two of those or not. I have these two, which are a little bit larger. Should I go with clear or with white? So here's some clear ones. Those are two different shapes though. Let's see. I can get a little bit of white softlex or black softlex.
clear. Oh, I have plenty of space on my desk. Why do I stick everything right in arm's distance where you can knock it over? <laughs> like, give stuff some room to breathe. We've got clear and clear. Well, if I go with clear, I think I'll go with the white. This way, it looks nice and bright. Just trim a little bit of soft flex. And get a couple of crimps out. Two by two millimeter crimp tubes. And let's see how they look. Ooh, that could be very cute as like a little hoop, couldn't it? See, if I do a hoop though, it would be, it would be facing this way. So I'd have to put a jump ring on it if I wanted it to face out. Or I can make more of like a, a dangle with a bead and this dangling on the end. Let me check out, let me, let me grab a jump ring and see what I think about a hoop one. I always love a hoop. <laughs> Does anyone else? A big hoop fan. Let's see if I have any jump rings. I think that will be wide enough to go through there. All right, let me see if this one, it's hard to tell when you're looking at your jump rings, is this gonna be the right size? Let's see if this one will fit. So I'm gonna grab a hold of my jump ring on one side of the seam and then grab a hold on the other side, and open it up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to close it. So twist it with my wrist and close it. And now what if I strung that on? Oh my gosh, that's so cute. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Do we want to add any beads? Or is that going to distract it? I kind of feel like I might like the simplicity. I think I like the simplicity for this one. Okay, now that I'm doing a hoop, I wish I cut myself a little more soft flex, but let's see. You can do this a couple of different ways. I'm gonna try and make a little loopity loop at the top. No, I'm not, cause that's not gonna be enough. What if it's really small? What do you think about a little tiny hoop or should I go and cut more wire and make it a big hoop? Maybe I'll share, I'll show one of each way so that we can uh, decide. 
the side, little hoop or big hoop. More wire. Okay, so a lot of times when I do a hoop, I like to do a hoop where there's a crimp on either side of the beads at the bottom, and this way it looks like it's part of the design. But what's gonna happen here is that crimp is going to, um, this jump ring is gonna slide right over it. So the other thing you can do is do two crimps at the top, and then you have your ear wire in between. But again, your, your ear wire might slide over it. If you have a crimp cover, you can make it a little bit thicker. Or I'm gonna try and do this one where I take one of the strands and I come back through that crimp tube so that I've got a little loop at the top. Now you just wanna make sure you, before you crimp, that you have these wires in a position where they are gonna lay nicely. And then this way I can just attach my ear wire to this little loop at the top and I still have like a hoop shape. And then you can play so we've got this size hoop, or you can pull it and make it a small hoop like that. Or you can take one of these, um, push it back through and make that hoop bigger again. Well, easier said than done now that I've got it tightened in there. Cute. All right, I'll leave this one small and then I'll make another one bigger. For those of you that like small, is this small enough or do you want me to make it even smaller? <laughs> and then I'm going to do another one large and I'm going <laughs> to this way. This way you can see them both ways. So for someone, Lydia says even smaller for the small, for the small version. So if I were to make this one even smaller, just a teeny tiny little loop. I probably made this little loop on the top too small because I pulled the wrong one. So I'm just going to back that one back out. Oh, that's interesting too. You could have it be like the same the same size. You wanna make sure you can get your, your crimper, crimping pliers in this little space. So that's why I couldn't pull it just to... Oh, that's a cute idea. Marisol says, if you don't like the emptiness of the wire, you could string a, 11, a size 11 seed beads in rainbow colors. Yeah, that would be really sweet too. Okay, so here's a little small one, and then we're gonna do one larger. I'm 
you could totally do it dangle this way too. There's a lot of options. So I, I put both wires through the crimp first to make my first loop. And then I'm going to take the longer wire around and back through to make that second loop. And then you could pull that tail to make that smaller. And then you could pull this tail if you wanted to make that one smaller. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and stick my magical crimping pliers over that crimp tube and give it a good squeeze. You get your four pinched corners and then hopefully I can get this back in there. See, that's what I mean about making your loop too small at the top. Got to make sure you can get back in there. I could probably get to it from the bottom. Okay, I'm going to squeeze over the top of it, which is not ideal, but it worked. And then trim these two pieces here. And then lastly, you just open up your ear wire and slide it on with your heart facing out. Oh my gosh, so cute. Yes, I'm using size two by two millimeter crimp tube for that. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger cause I couldn't quite get in there with the crimping pliers. I wanna make sure that when you go this direction, you can get in there. that I can get in. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this bottom one a little bit bigger so it looks a little more intentional since it's, so it's not as small as my top loop. And then go ahead and ravioli time, crimp it. and trim off that excess. So there you have it. The little mama and baby version super cute i'll have to put them on and see what they look like oh marisol you can even put the little one inside of the big one yeah if you had more um, of the pop outs where you have multiples you could do something like that or you could even just put um what if i took the jump ring you could bead the outside and then take this and actually hang it from here so that your heart is in the center. Let's see if that'll work. I'm going to put it back on down here, I'm sure, but I'm curious now. Will it fit? up here. Oh. 
how would that? Well, yeah, that could kind of work too if you wanted to beat around the outside and then have the heart hanging in the center. That would be really sweet. That would be really sweet also. Cute. And then this one you could do as a pendant either going up either side or having this one hang from the side like the other ones are too. Have it kind of hang like that and then string it. Oh, you may have an issue where it slides around though. I'm sure gravity would keep it in place. Let me see what happens if I add one more jump ring there. Will gravity keep it in place? And is this jump ring big enough to go all the way around? Probably not. So in that case, I probably either need to make a soft flex jump ring or go up in size. Okay, I'm just going to do that for right now just to see um, how it would look if I was stringing. You can do that or you can create a little connection like that too so you can get it a little bit more snug. Decisions, decisions. I do like how it will lay on the side like the earrings if you were to do it like this. But you could very also just do two connections on either side here and have it lay have it lay flat. What would you do? What would be your What would be your idea of choice? For the pendant. Let's put these on here so you can see them a little bit better. Cute. <laughs> Suzanne's not sure. I'm not sure either. I am not sure either. That's why I was like, let me put a couple beads on it and see how I feel.
see how it hangs. Is that the same one? So that would be if I let it hang on its side, which I do think is cute. I just don't know if this jump ring feels a little bit too big. <laughs> the Match the earrings, says Zach. The designs are endless. They are. I know there's so many options which is one of those things, right? There's no right or wrong way. It's just different options and what um, what you feel like doing. Ooh, that's a fun bead. A little square. Well, even if I decide to find a smaller jump ring, you can always add that and change that. Um, change that later. Not too big of a deal. Let's add a couple more of these clear beads. What Stephanie said, what about doing it with a jump ring on the eye pin to allow it, and on an eye pin to allow it to hang? Hmm. Well, I think it is hanging. It's just hanging off to the side. But maybe I'm not um, understanding what your, oh, these are two different beads. I like this bead. Do we have another one of those? I definitely have another one of these. I didn't even see that bead earlier. Ooh, I don't see another one of those melons, so I'm going to take that one off. And put this one on. And drop beads in the process. Raise your hand if you drop beads. <laughs> Every time I do. <laughs> I think I'll put these, let's see if I've got another one of those somewhere. Yeah, there's one. This little half silver, half white one at the end. Ooh. All right, I think I'll crimp it there and then just have to decide on how long I want it. I probably will wear it pretty short. I would think more like 18 inches on this one, which has been kind of my go-to lately, which is interesting. I used to always wear really long necklaces and now I've been wearing kind of 18 inches. 
So I have these little short pieces from before. I'm going to grab one of them to add it to my crimp tube. First thing I'm going to do is just make sure I'm kind of centered in my wire. So I'm going to match those up and then pull my beads down to the bottom. Yeah. And then I can add my little dummy wire into the crimp. And the reason I do this is because you want two um, strands at least going through a two by two millimeter crimp tube to make a nice connection. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my crimp into my crimping pliers and crimp. Put it 90 degrees back into my magical crimping pliers and crimp again and go around a few times. This lovely tool turns your crimp tube into a nice little bead and then you can trim off these extra pieces. And let your beads go right up to that crimp tube, just like so. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Marisol is asking something. I need to order the rainbow paints. Will they ship together? Um, yeah, if you order the rainbow paints, they will all ship together. You can order the bundle if you want all of them and you'll get that extra 10% off by getting um, all the items. So I'm doing the same thing on the other side, putting that little dummy. And then I also, before I crimp, wanna make sure I get my necklace in a nice looped shape so that my crimp is not too tight. If you crimp it when it's straight and you pull it real tight, then it's not gonna hang nicely. You do want a little bit of breathing room and a little bit of space between your last bead and your crimp tube. There you go, so I got my front part done, and then in the back, I'm just going to add a little clasp. Oh, we've got some hands raised, raising hands. I drop beads every single video, <laughs> and every single time I sit down to bead. Oh, Kelly says, I think it looks great the way you look. I just thought you might want a different option. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Every time wash hands, I think you're saying raise hands, but right? <laughs> totally. They all just go flying to the ground and then it's like a bead hunt treasure. Well, this turned out really, really cute. I love all of them. And I think I'd like this design a little bit better if I had beads going around um, the outside, just personally. So I'm gonna take this jump ring back out of that little spot and add it back to the bottom. Cause for me, I feel like it works well on the bottom when I've just got the wire. And then close that back up. And make sure I put it on the right way. I did. I did. You could be team large hoop or team little hoop, or maybe your team both sizes and you just want to mix and match them. <laughs> Let's see how they look on. So there's the larger one. 
I didn't even think about the fact that the, the white wire will probably be a nice, um, a nice pop on my dark hair. And if I used black, you'd probably, it'd probably just disappear entirely. So there's the little one. And let's see if you can, you see the big one, the larger one? Is my hair in the way? Or you can wear them both together and go one, one big, one small. <laughs> Yeah, they're kind of cute with the, asymm <laughs> the asymmetry, aren't they? And then lastly, I've got this sweet necklace here, which I don't have a clasp on it yet. Just hold that up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep them one big and one. Let's see if I can get my hair out of the way. I think I'll keep them one, one big and one little because why not, right? <gasps> Look what happened to my heart. Oh, it did go sideways. <laughs> so so just be um just be aware that your heart may slide into a position you don't want it to. So um finding a jump ring that is either smaller or making a connection with Softlex might hold it in place a little bit better. I might try that right now. One more thing, one more thing, because I'm curious to see if it'll work a little bit better if I use Softlex. Sorry, this video turned out to be a little bit longer today. I'm just kind of going with it though. So thanks for hanging with me. Okay. I have this piece, this little piece over here. So if I were to put it on there So instead of a jump ring connection, I was thinking, what if I did it like that? And then this way, well, it still might slide that way. Might not be able to help that part. Like a little bow. Now I'm just experimenting. I'm not really sure if this will work. But I'm thinking if I could make it a little bit more snug with the wire. And if it doesn't work, I can just cut it free. Not the whole piece, I can just cut this little connection free and go back to a jump ring. So now when I lift it up and shake it around, Yeah, it seems to have gotten a little bit stronger of a hold on it. So if you wanna make sure that it doesn't move around too much and it stays in that position, then give it a try with a Softlex connection that is sort of like a little, a little dangle, a little figure eight, and that kind of hugs it a little bit tighter than that jump ring did. All right, so that was fun. 
Love is love, different sizes. We're all, we're all unique, right? We can have two different sizes that work. And let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, and now that will hold a little bit nicer right in the center there. Well, this was a fun rainbow project today. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you um, check out all of the new paints and the new fun pop outs. Um, we were just talking, Thomas and I, before I went live, how um, he thinks his son would really like this project with the pop outs. And I think that's what's kind of really um, neat about these little wooden pieces is that there'd be a great project to do with kids, with grandkids. Um, they make it super simple. And in most cases, you can just pop them out and they are a little pendant and stuff all on their own. So really fun, crafty project for kids and the kid in all of us, right? Always love the chance that I get to uh, paint with you and combine it with jewelry making. That just makes it even extra, extra, extra special. So thank you all for being here with me today. Hope you have a rainbow-licious rest of your week. And I will see you again next Monday um, for at 1 p.m. Pacific time for a new episode of Free Spirit Beating. We've got Sarah, let's see. Oh no, we've got a live sale tomorrow first. So live sale tomorrow over on the Softlex Company Facebook page at noon Pacific time. Got Sarah on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And then we have the great greet, the great bead trade on Friday. And that has a few different times. Um, go check that out in the Great Bead Extravaganza Facebook group will be we've paired up to i'm um i'm paired with christy friesen and i think my time is 12 45 p.m sarah goes um before me and i don't remember who she's paired up with and then there's two other pairings after me so i'll have a full day and what that is is we've all got this little package here um it was sent to all of us designers we have to open the package and design with it on the fly on Friday for the great bead trade. So all the goodies in here um, are supplied by the companies participating, and then we're gonna put something fun together. So looking forward to that. I didn't participate in the last great bead trade. I think we did that in like November, or October or something. Uh, so I'm happy to be um, part of the challenge this time. So I'll see you all on Friday, and then I'll see you again on Monday. All right. Have a great week. Happy creating. Bye, everybody.